Last night, we brought you the story of Chance Engelbert, the father and husband who went missing while visiting his in-laws in the small Nebraska town of Garing. That was two years ago. And after we aired his story, we heard from many of you with questions about this investigation. Detective Brian Eads is standing by to talk more about this case with us tonight. And we're also gonna show you more of investigative correspondent Rich McHugh's exclusive interviews with Chance's mother and friend that you haven't seen yet. But first, we wanna go through some of the facts here. This is what we know right now. On July 6, 2019, Chance became upset. Authorities say he got upset with his wife's family over comments about Chance's making less money at his new job. He got out of the car and then he walked away, calling a friend and asking him to pick him up and drive him back to Wyoming from Nebraska. And then Chance seemingly vanished. There are two main pieces of evidence in this case. This surveillance video that you're seeing here showing the last time anyone saw Chance. And then these strange text messages to his aunt the last time anyone heard from him. Text that his friends and his family believe may not have come from chance. Investigators are now looking at a couple of theories in the case. The first is a nearby river. The theory that chance could have wandered or fell in, possibly becoming disoriented or caught off guard in the middle of a powerful storm that was happening in Garing that night. But searches found no body and Chance's friends and family say there is no way that happened. Some people say, look, there was a powerful storm that night. The river was at its all time high. Um, it's a very good chance that he ended up in the river and it's a tragic accident. What would you say? I, I'd say Chance was born and raised for that kind of weather. There's just no way it could take him. Um, I've hunted with him for two years beforehand the, the guy could cover country. I, I like to call him a mountain goat, man. He could, he left me in the dust anytime we went hunting, anytime. He was beyond belief, an outdoorsman. There's just no way the weather took him. And now the second theory is that something bad happened to Chance, something criminal, perhaps. Many have focused on that argument that he had with his in-laws before he disappeared. Bailey, his wife, and her family did not want to be interviewed on camera for this story because they say they have received threats. Police say they have been cooperative, the family has, since the beginning. But Bailey did speak to Rich McHugh on the phone. And here's what she told him. I told the cops everything that I know. I've been completely transparent with them. I've never had anything, hid anything from anybody involved with it. They just don't like the answers that I have to give. We invited the police into our homes to do searches, and we were all cleared long ago. And now here we are, two years later, and still no sign of Chance. This is what Chance's mom told Rich McHugh. You miss him? Yeah, terribly. I relive it over and over and over every day. <laughs> Excuse me. So I see the video of him walking down the street on the surveillance cameras and I replay that every day thinking I'm going to figure out where and why. But nothing's coming yet. <laughs> In your mind, this was no accident? No. I, I don't, I'm not pointing fingers. I don't know if it was family or, or a robbery gone bad is what I've been told. He wouldn't have been by the river. He wouldn't have fell in the river. He wouldn't have jumped in the river. He wanted to come home, maybe not to the ranch, but he wanted to go to Wyoming. He wanted to start the new job. And the mystery continues. Brian Eads is leading the investigation into Chance's disappearance, and he is joining us live tonight from Nebraska. Uh, we appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. No problem. Thank you, ma'am. I want to start with something uh, Chance's mom said right there, uh, potentially a robbery gone bad. Have you gone down that lane and found anything that helps corroborate that theory? Oh, we have. There's been a few different variations of that story uh, that have been reported uh, as far as different people involved, uh, different circumstances, all of which we look into and some continue to look into just little bits and pieces 
uh, still very much an active investigation. And um, but yeah, we've we've heard those same reports and, and follow up on them. Let's talk about something that Bailey said uh, that she told Rich McHugh. She said, I have told the cops everything I know. They just don't like the answers that I have to give. What is she referring to? Um, I think what she was referring to was that some of the, the public or the social media doesn't like the answers. Um, I, I've spoken with Bailey several times, um, formal interviews, uh, phone calls with follow-up questions, uh, occasionally a text message for a follow-up just based on a tip that comes in. She's always been very cooperative with me, very cordial. Um, interviewed her at, at length. Uh, my first interview with her was probably a couple hours long, so she's always been very cooperative with me. Do you suspect foul play that a crime was committed that someone harmed Chance? I can't rule it out. It's one of those... Uh, at this point, there's no evidence to suggest it did happen, but there's also no evidence to suggest it didn't. There's a lot of rumors, a lot of speculation. Um, like I said, we, we continue to get a lot of tips on the case, and some of them are very similar, but they'll have little pieces that are different. Like um, the people, the names will change, but the circumstances might be the same, or the names of the people involved will be the same, but the circumstances will be different. Mm -hmm. The hard part is, is when you go to try to run them down, it's always, well, I heard it from this person. And you talk to that person, it's like, well, I heard it from this person. Very often, we can't ever get to the person who actually saw or heard anything firsthand. It's just rumors and a lot of sometimes street credibility of people trying to glom onto it to give themselves a little bit of street cred. Mm. Hard to do an investigation when no one's talking. Do you have a person of interest or have you had one? We have at certain points of the investigation based on just the tips that we've had. Um, we've conducted some polygraphs to be able to rule people out and been successful in that and ruling people out and then also did further polygraphs on people who reported that particular portion in which the reporting party failed and admitted that they made it up. Are you currently investigating a person or people as a person of interest? Uh, no specific persons of interest right now. Uh, we still have a couple of ongoing tips that we're looking into just, just because we haven't fully been able to run them to ground and, and rule them out. Brian, I understand that Bailey, Chance's wife, asked for a death certificate pretty early on in his disappearance. He is still considered a missing person. So why did she ask for that? What did she say? So that was uh, asked for because regardless of what the circumstances were at the time, the way she explained it was she had a son to provide for. She was not working at the time. Chance was the sole bread earner for the house. And in discussing it with Chance's mom, they discussed that if he was to get on Chance's Social Security, they would have to have a death certificate in order to show that. But you can't have um, a death so certificate without a body, right? Um, you can after a certain period of time. How much but time is that? Every state's different, and I believe here it's about seven years. So as an investigator, when you get that request, um, what do you make of that? How does that play into your search for answers? I mean, obviously, when we hear that, I mean, I was at the press conference when, when that question came up, and certainly it's a red flag, something that we're going to focus in on. And then later I had a chance to sit down and interview her at length, and yeah, that's part of the things I talked to her about. Did they ever receive and, the death certificate? No. Okay. Uh, there clearly is a divide between these two families. It is a tragedy. Uh, this man was loved by a lot of people. They want answers. Um, why are the families in such strife? You know, there's a, there seems to be a lot of moving parts with that. Uh, some drama that went back, you know, even prior to Chance's disappearance. Um, a lot of that, obviously, I can't speak to because it's not my circumstances. Um, I see it and sort through it to make sure that it doesn't have any bearing on the case. But yeah, it's definitely unfortunate. And you know, as a family man myself, I'd love to see the family be able to find ways to make amends and come back together as a family. 
Uh, I did promise some viewer questions, Brian, and I just want to get to just a general question that a lot of people have asked uh, who are following this case. Um, have other agencies been brought in to consult on the investigation, the FBI, uh, other authorities there in Nebraska, and if not, why? Uh, so many agencies have been a part of this case during the first initial week when it was more of a search phase. Uh, Several agencies were from the local area and outside the area were involved. Um, since then, as needed, other agencies have been consulted or utilized. Um, the FBI has assisted on a, on a couple of portions of the investigation. They've also been consulted throughout the investigation. Um, I'm good friends with a couple of members of the FBI. Um, I was uh, a credentialed special uh, deputy agent for the FBI for probably the better part of my career. So I know those guys very well. Um, and then also some authorities from Wyoming, uh, Wyoming DCI has helped us out on a couple of occasions. Um, South Dakota authorities mm -hmm. a little bit and also uh, the FBI out of Rapid City has helped us. Okay. Um, on certain parts of it. Well, it sounds like it is a, a full-on open investigation, but I know that your work is much more difficult two years plus after Chance has gone missing. So um, we appreciate you coming on, giving us an update, and we'll continue to follow it. And um, we'll have you back when you have some more answers to share. Uh, Brian Eads, appreciate your time. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. And if you have any information on about the whereabouts of Chance Engelbert, contact the Gearing Police Department. We've got that number on your screen. Also, if you would like to see Rich McHugh's full report on the case, go to NewsNationNow.com. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.